Hi, I'm Jacques DeVoe from Audio Kinetic. Welcome to a new quick tip video on voice management in WISE. First of all, why do you want to use voice management in WISE? Really the first reason and the main reason is to reduce the stress of the audio engine to increase the audio performance. And by doing this you also increase the, the quality and the focus of the audio being heard in the game as well. If we look at WISE, we're going to focus on two methods that we use for managing the voices. The first one is voice limiting, which determines the number of voices that play for a specific object, and also playback volume, which provides behaviors for when sounds reach a certain volume threshold. If we look at a parent object now, I have a, a switch container here, we'll click onto the advanced settings. That's where all of the voice limiting functionality uh, is set up. And the first one we'll look at is the playback limit option. And you can see here where I can enable the limit sound instances to a number per game object. So I'll enable that. And just to recap what a game object is, this is basically an entity in game that's going to be playing sounds in WISE. So in this case, let's say if I have a goblin uh, on, who's playing footsteps, I can set a limit here, let's say two. So that means that uh, there'll be no more than two footsteps per game object, per goblin, so to speak. Um, if there's 10 goblins walking around, there'll be no more than 10 times 2, 20 footsteps uh, played for goblins. So that's basically the playback limit on objects within the hierarchy. If we jump up to the master mixer hierarchy, so I have a bus called footsteps, which I'll double click on. And here you'll notice that the advanced settings, I only have playback limits available. So in this case, I could say technically a number like perhaps 10. So this is a global setting. This means that there will never be any more than 10 footsteps played through my footstep bus throughout the game. And you should also note that uh, whether you're limiting the instances of a bus or an object in the actor mixer hierarchy, uh, this can be controlled using real-time parameter controls to change that uh, number of limit instances at a given time throughout the game. So, when the sound engine needs to start stop playing sounds or calling sounds, that's done by using priorities. So if we go back to my container here, the second portion here is the playback priority, which I can set and also control using real-time parameter controls. So if the engine needs to start killing sounds, it'll maintain the high priority sounds and then start killing the low priority sounds in order to meet any instances that you've set up. Uh, you should also note that the playback priority can also be offset uh, by distance, the maximum distance of your radius. This is really handy basically for sounds that are further away automatically become better candidates to be killed in the case of a priority. The other functionality provided is using the volume thresholds and that's basically set up in the project settings of your project. So here basically you configure uh, per platform a volume threshold and this is actually a volume parameter and that'll determine how sounds react once they go above and below that particular volume. The other thing I should note as well is that these are the default settings. You can also control these volume thresholds individually as well using the Audio Engine SDK. And that's handy to modify this value at runtime. For example, if you're in a combat, uh, you have a lot of swords going on, you can increase the volume threshold to something like maybe minus 30 dB. So to keep, to keep the, the important sounds being played, everything else will be, tr will be cut off. And then now that your combat is finished, the player now resumes exploring, uh, you can drop that volume threshold now back to something like minus 64 dB. So the performance is automatically maintained uh, when it needs to. Okay, so if we close this, let's go back and look at my footstep container. So here, the volume threshold determines exactly how this particular object will react when it goes above or below minus 64 dB in this case. In the case of continue to play, this is handy for elements like music where you don't necessarily care or want them to stop when they reach below a volume threshold. Uh, the, the option kill voice, things like footsteps, short sounds, these can automatically die when the volume reaches below the set threshold. And finally, set to virtual voice. This is really handy for ambient sounds, torches, that kind of things that you want to hear kick in and out according to the settings that you have set up down here. So when the voice goes above the threshold and becomes physical again, you can play it from the beginning, play it from elapsed time, or resume it from where it paused. So there you are, a quick look at how you can manage voices in WISE. The first being playback limiting using voice priority, and second volume thresholds. That's it. See you soon.